Hey guys, today we're going to be working on line segments and distance notes. Now you're actually going to be working with numbers this time. We're kind of done with a little bit of the vocabulary, but that vocabulary will not go away. We're going to keep using it. Um, so first we're going to talk about measuring line segments. So on, remember this means line. So on line PQ, to say that M is between points P and Q means that P and Q and M are collinear. In other words, they're all going to be on the same line. And that means that, and the picture's right here if you have trouble seeing it. So M is between P and Q. And that doesn't necessarily mean that M is right there. It just means that it's somewhere, it's somewhere in between this line. And we don't really know where. But you, this is a visualization, so it's not actually drawn to scale. So um, that means that PM plus MQ is equal to PQ. So in other words, PM is this half plus this half, or part, not necessarily half, is equal to the whole thing. So it kind of makes sense. And this is also known as the segment addition postulate. So you add the two mini segments together and it gives you the whole segment. Now we're going to use the picture below it. It says on line AC, so this means, remember, line. AB is equal to BC, and they're both equal to 3 centimeters. Um, just so that you're aware, whenever we write things like this, the reason why we don't put a symbol above it is because we're talking about actual distances. So as you can see that this says 3 centimeters, it's a real distance. You don't have to use symbols if you're talking about a real distance of something. Same thing with angles when we get into that. We won't necessarily use the symbols um, if we're talking about real distances. That's when you know you don't have to use them. Okay, back to what I was saying. So AB is 3 centimeters, and BC is also 3 centimeters. And these little lines, these are called tick marks, and it means it shows congruence. Um, congruence just means that they're the same. That's all that congruent means. It means same. So tick marks means that this segment and this one are going to be the same length. So you learned a couple of vocabulary words right there, tick marks and congruent. Therefore, the segments, segments are congruent. And congruent doesn't mean equal. Um, whenever we use that word. The word congruent just means same. It means that you know that they're the same, but you don't necessarily know what the length is. So you may have two rulers, let's say two pieces of wood. You'll have two pieces of wood that when you put them next to each other, they are clearly the same length. So you know they're congruent, but you don't necessarily know they're equal until you measure them and figure out how long they are. So congruent means that they're the same, although congruent also means that they are equal. But we use the word equal for numbers, for measurement, and we use the word congruent just to say they're the same when we don't know a true measurement. So they are congruent or the same measure. So the measure of AB is written as AB. So just like I said before, it's written that way because we're talking about true numbers. Anytime we use that word measure, we're talking about true numbers. So we don't have to do the little symbol above it um, because we're talking about true numbers. I know it's a little confusing. It's the beginning of the school year, and we do t start off with some really confusing things, but you'll catch on. Um, and again, the reason why this says EF with no symbol up above is because we're dealing with actual numbers here. So because we have numbers, you don't have to have a symbol. 
So EF. Well, EF is made up of ED plus DF. That's equal to EF. And just so that you can see what I'm doing, ED, DF is equal to EF. ED is 1.2 plus DF is 1.9 is equal to EF which means that EF is 3.1 and we need to use our units, which is centimeters. BC, so BC is AB, or AC is AB plus BC is equal to AC. So let's highlight so you can see what I'm talking about, AB plus BC is equal to AC. So fill in the spots that we know. AB is 2 and 3 quarters plus BC is equal to 6. So we need to subtract 2 and 3 quarters from both sides. This cancels. BC is equal to. Okay, so whenever you think about this, this is, you can think about it as in dollars. Anytime you use quarters, you can think about actual quarters, like as in money. So this is $6. And you're taking away $2.75, because that's what three-fourths is, right? It's three quarters, which is 0.75 or 75 cents which leaves you with $3.25, right? Which is just three and a fourth. And remember, in Pre-AP Geometry, we do not use calculators. So you're going to have to remember how to use these things. You can convert them to decimals to make it easier. And money is always easier for everybody because it's something that we've dealt with. Um, you could have also... Um, converted it to whole fractions. So two and three quarters is really 11 fourths. And then if you converted six, that would be 24 fourths. So 24 fourths minus 11 fourths is 13 fourths, which will turn into three and one fourth. So you can do it any of those ways, but you have to pick a way that works best for you. Most people would prefer to do it with decimals and that's perfectly fine as long as you can convert it back to a fraction. So whatever we start with, you need to end with. Number three, find the value of X. And RS if S is between R and T. So this right here tells you what you need to draw. And if you're not given a picture, always draw it. It is the number one cardinal rule of geometry. If you're not given a picture, draw the picture. So, so you have R and T. And then S is between them somewhere. And we don't know where, you just kind of guess. Um, it may end up being that S and T is the short one, but that's why we say also in geometry, nothing is drawn to scale because you don't really know until you've solved and figured it out. So RS is 5X, ST is 3X, and then RT, RT is 48. So RS plus ST is equal to RT, RS is 5X, ST is 3X, and RT is 48. And then you combine like terms, so 5X plus 3X is 8X, divide both sides by 8, and X is 6.
which it says that's one of the things we have to find. And in geometry, you always go back and look because frequently you're not just looking for that variable, you're looking for something else. So we're also looking for RS. RS was 5X, which is 5 times 6, which means that RS was 30. So again, um, I'm not necessarily going to redraw when the picture is going to be the same. Um, and you draw the picture so that you can do this part. So that you can write the formula. That's one of the hard parts of geometry is coming up with that formula. So draw it so that you can. RS is 2X. ST is 5X plus 4. And RT is 32. Combine like terms, 5x plus 2x is 7x. Subtract 4 on both sides. 7x is equal to 28. Divide by 7. And x is 4. And then we also need to find rs, don't forget. Which is 2x or 2 times Four, which means RS is 8. Now we're going to talk about distance. Um, there are two different ways that you can do distance. You can use the distance formula, but if you draw it on a coordinate plane, if you're given a coordinate plane, you can also use Pythagorean theorem, and I'll show you both ways. So just in case you don't remember, Pythagorean theorem. It's a squared plus b squared is equal to c squared for a triangle. And this c is always the hypotenuse. In other words, the longest side. <clears throat> and I'll show you how to do both. And in fact, the distance formula was made using Pythagorean theorem. Pythagorean theorem came first, and then we made the distance formula from that. So find the distance between each pair. So I'm actually going to make this smaller so that we can have the graph as part of it. Um, so we have A at 0, 0. And then B at 3, 4. So you have this line segment. And we want to know how long it is. So remember I told you there are two ways. We can plug it into this formula here and solve. And we don't need a graph to do that. But if you have a graph, it actually takes less steps to use Pythagorean theorem. And you can do it either way, whichever way you find more comfortable. <clears throat> if you use the distance formula, this will be your second x value. This will be your first x value. This will be your second y value. <clears throat> and this will be your first y value. And you plug it in and solve. So it's one step at a time. 3 minus 0 squared plus 4 minus 0 squared. <clears throat> 3 minus 0 is 3, and then don't forget your squared, plus 4 minus 0 is 4 squared. 3 squared is 9, 4 squared is 16, 9 plus 16 is 25, and the square root of 25 is 5. So you can absolutely use the distance formula if you want. But you can also use Pythagorean theorem. And the way that you do that is you make a triangle out of this segment. So you go straight up and down from one segment and straight left and right from the other segment. And then you count how many blocks that line is. So this block is one, two, three. 
so it'll be three. And this block is one, two, three, and four. So it's gonna be four long. And that's my A and my B, and it doesn't matter which one you make A and which one you make B, but it will be three squared plus four squared is equal to C squared. So just like up here, you have A squared And then you have B squared. Oops, that was a terrible line, sorry. And then you have C squared, which is just the length of the segment itself. And then you saw from there, three squared is nine, plus four squared is 16. There's a reason I drew this here. If you look, they're very, very similar. Nine plus 16 is 25. And then to undo the C squared, you square it, square root it, which means that C is five. So as you can see, it can be done either way. It doesn't matter which way if you're given a graph. Um, this one has to have a graph. This one can be done for any distance, with the graph or without. So pick your favorite way. I'm gonna do both of these both ways so that you can see, um, but you can pick any way and it doesn't matter. So again, I'm gonna do the distance formula first. I'm going to plug it in. I totally did my X's and Y's wrong. Sorry. On my first problem, it didn't matter because we're dealing with zero, zero, but, oh, wow. Okay. So my second, X, oh, no, I did it right. I'm sorry. Silly me. Okay, so six minus, and then we have a negative three squared plus two minus, and then we have a negative four. Six minus three is the same thing as six plus three. So remember that anytime you have minus a negative, it's plus. Um, and I always leave the top of my square root. I draw it at the very end because I don't have, know how long I'm going to need it. So um, just to be so that you're aware, I draw the top of my square root last just because I don't know how long it's going to need to be. Six plus three is nine. Two plus four is six. Nine squared is 81. Six squared is 36. Eighty one plus thirty six is one hundred and seventeen. And that you can't take the square root of. So it's literally just one hundred and seventeen. So again, let's draw these on the graph. Negative three, negative four. Six and two. This is D. This is C. And this is how long we're trying to find the segment. So if we're doing Pythagorean theorem, this is how long my segment is. I'm gonna draw a straight horizontal line until it meets the other one and a straight vertical line. This one has one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine squares. And the only reason I'm writing these numbers is in is because you can't see me count them. I can't point where you can see. So I write them in just so you can see how I count them, which is why I go back through and erase them, because if it was me doing it by myself, I wouldn't normally write those in. I'm writing them in whenever you're taking notes this way, because you can't see me tap all of the blocks. And this is one, two, three, four, five, and six. 
so six long. So again, we have a squared plus b squared. So nine squared plus six squared is equal to c squared. Nine squared is 81, six squared is 36. 81 plus 36 is 117. And to undo the c squared, we take the square root. So c is the square root of 117 because it cannot be reduced. And that's the end of your notes.